Welcome to Chapter 2 of Intro to Global Trade. This chapter is titled, When is a Company Ready to Go Global? And identifies and explains criteria used in deciding when an individual or cor corporation is ready to take the plunge into international trade. Sometimes the driving force comes when a company or a potential customer from outside the U.S. makes the first move. Sometimes the move happens from inside a company. No matter who initiates it, there are four important elements needed in order to enter into global trade. In this chapter, we will go through each. Number one, management commitment. There's a need for strong commitment, which means money, resources, and hiring considerations. A willingness to wait for profit, because profit generally is not immediate. The payback period is often lengthy. There are overhead expenses. And does the company have adequate resources to get started and continue? Another commitment is willingness to take the risk. Later we will analyze this in depth and consider ways to reduce risk at varying levels of company involvement. Number two, product experience. Wait until you understand the product before you enter the international market. What other cultures want your product in its current form? These are six questions in its regard. Who are the end users? Why your product? What type of business? Manufacturer, service provider, government, non-government, personal consumer, why your product? Is there a need for perishables, durables, and luxury? Two, what is your competitive advantage? Innovation, price, features, quality service, distribution, your brand equity? Number three, what is the most effective distribution channel? Direct or indirect? Direct would include internet and personal sales. Indirect would, would be retail, bulk, using an agent or broker or horse wholesaler. Number four, value chain. Value added activities. What role does a company play in the chain? What value added activities can you perform? What could you outsource? The purpose is to clarify functions to duplicate overseas. Number five, industry assessment and profit potential. Purpose is to develop indicators of success. Truly, Assess the potential market. Access resources available to provide objective basis for decisions. Don't rely on what you would like to do. The next slide is of Porter's, and so we'll take a look at this more in depth. Number six, evaluation of success or failures. A business plan must address indicators of failure or needed change. Be objective and aware of escalating commitment. Don't go in too much too fast. Let's take a look at Porter's. Wikipedia says that Porter's Five Forces Analysis is a framework to analyze the level of competition within an industry and for business strategy development. And actually, Wikipedia is right. It draws upon the industrial organizational economics in five forces that determine the competitive intensity and therefore how attractive the market is. Attractiveness in this context refers to the overall industry profit or profitability. An unattractive industry is one in which the combination of these five forces acts to drive down overall profits. A very unattractive industry would be one approaching pure competition in which available profits for all firms are driven to normal profit. The next element of international trade readiness is cash flow. It costs money to develop new international markets and takes more time than does a domestic market. Stopping an initiative in the middle due to finances detracts from your credibility and it could be very difficult to restart. Capacity and capability. Manufacturing includes impact 
to your company of sales volume increases, shortened production periods and logistical challenges of trying to track the buyers separately. Product, your ability to modify the product for your new market. Research and development, instructions and documentation that may have to be in another language or using other terminology. And service, necessary staff knowing and understanding the standards and the laws and rules and levels of expertise. Can you handle increased volume. Perceived barriers is the way this chapter concludes. Perceived barriers means they're not actual but they're just perceived by many. International expertise. Now actually this can be learned or outsourced. You can hire someone for the, for the expertise needed. Including language need to determine necessity for this. Um, you can actually use an interpreter. Bigger issues actually are relationship skills, technical skills, work ethic, and knowledge of the other country, their laws and customs. And I want to emphasize the cultural differences being relationship skills. We will look at this in depth later. This is the end of 